Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks by the New Art School. Our guest today is Pavel Pisklakov. Welcome, Pavel. Hello, Lefters. Fantastic to have you here. It's wonderful. Thank you for inviting me. So tell us about you and your work. Uh, well, I'm, I live in Russia, in Chelyabinsk. Uh, uh, I am a designer, typographer, posterist, and educator. Um, I work at the South Ural State University in Chelyabinsk. Chelyabinsk is a city near the Urals. Uh, the Ural Mountains. So it's, uh, uh, people usually think that, you know, it's a kind of a, in, in scent, uh, in the middle of Russia, but no, no, it's close to the Moscow because the center of Russia is far from, uh, where our place because Russia is very huge. Um, I live in Chelyabinsk. It's just two hours by plane from Moscow to my town. Uh, and, uh, it's just, uh, I think it's already Asia because we have a border between Europe and Asia, you know, uh, just in the Urals. So, um, I, I live in Chelyabinsk. I teach for, I think around 20 years of design and the computer science and uh, you know my way in design is not very typical i think because uh, uh my first education my first degree was in applied math i am a mathematician uh and pro- a person who understands something about programming and something like that yes now about the computer science uh but for many years i work also with the design thing because when you know when you are programming you also think about the visual thing about the design and the, it's not only about the using the computer programs but but i think with my education i think it, it, it's a bit easier than for other people usually because <laughs> you know i i understand how to uh, how computer works uh, sometimes uh but uh, you know, it's um, uh, after that I I teach a lot. Uh, teach um, m- the majority of uh, I start from the uh, from layout, from typography and layout, uh, and then uh, it's also was a kind of Adobe products, you know, like in design, Illustrator, Photoshop. So as as always. You, uh, because we can't work without this uh, thing. And then we also teach the history of design because, uh, you know, sometimes it's a kind of, uh, I'm not sure that it's, uh, I think it's not a very, um, uh, you know, um, it's not a very scientific course on uh, uh, history of design, I think, from my point of view, because uh, I'm a design, so I have some kind of my, personal preferences, but I think it's uh, very important for students to understand what your teacher uh, think uh, about it. And, you know, because uh, if we take some books on history of design, we see that each book is very different from the other book because it's all, it's very huge, very huge theme. So we can go anywhere to the to the furniture to the graphic design to the uh, uh some other stuff yeah so or for example for the glass or something like that so it's uh and i but i think it's a kind of a way of uh for me as a teacher also and i think for each uh, everybody is a way to understand how i uh try to I think it's a kind of uh, ideological thing sometimes. So I think uh, each teacher has uh, his own ideas about design, his own ideas about design, his own way of explaining design, explain how you should go uh, his own way. Because you should show students only the way in which you want to go. And after that, uh, they can follow you or they can follow by 
their own way, but you can look at this way and try to help them to find it and to promote it in the uh, in the particular way. So it's uh, for me, it's uh, it's kind of uh, that thing. So and also, uh, it's I think it doesn't matter what you are teaching about. Uh, history of design, typography, uh, graphic design, poster design, anything. But uh, you always should explain your students the way you go. And you should uh, help them to see this way from your particular point of view. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have this very unique approach of coming from mathematics. Yeah. Uh, and how do you think this has influenced your design and your teaching? Uh, well, you know, I think it's uh, just the only way because I think that design is a way of solving problems. So I am, as a designer, it's a way of solving some kind of tasks, uh, different design tasks. I can say this way because we help our clients to go in a kind of a very specific or not specific way. Uh, so I think for me, design is uh, math. It's about math. Nothing else. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot of mathematics in design. Uh, so, and you know, so uh, how did you get into uh, and you know, yeah. I think it's one of the yeah. reason why I think maybe I'm usually thinking about grids or something like that, you know, because it's a, it's a kind of a kind of a. Absolutely. So tell us how you got into teaching. Uh, well, uh, you know, I start teaching, uh, many, many years ago. I start teaching, I think it was, uh, uh, not from the design, but I, mm, f first thing I, mm, when I, mm, when I was a student, I also teach kids, uh, uh, programming and also, and, uh, some other handful thing that also comes with mathematics and design. It's a kind of origami. Yeah. So creating something from paper. And, uh, then, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, for me, it's a kind of, uh, uh, a natural way into teaching because my grandmother was a teacher of geography. Uh, my father was a teacher at the university also. And, um, my mother was a doctor, and after that, she also teaching at the university. So, you know, it's a kind of a, uh, you know, the, the same way as, as uh, all the family goes. Yeah, you know, uh, like a, uh, but, you know, I think I strictly believe that when you are doing something, it should be something you like. Because if you don't love this, you can't do anything. And, uh, you know, sometimes... Of course, uh, I, I'd never think about the, uh, teaching like a, a difficult or boring thing. I always think about it like a way to, uh, uh, from one hand, I can, uh, deeply understand something because, uh, when your students ask you questions, you have to find the answer. And uh, sometimes when you are trying to find the answer for their, uh, questions, sometimes it's very simple question, but it can, uh, be, it's not shock to you, but you try to find out how to explain. Uh, and it's sometimes it's necessary to dig deeper and the deeper in the, some kind of ideas or in the history or something like that to explain them. Uh, so it's one of the, I always say my students that one of the best way to, Remember, understand something is uh, start to teach. When you're starting to teach, you understand better anything you do, uh, no matter uh, design or other subjects, any subject you can do it this way. Well, and uh, absolutely, yeah. What do you find is your greatest challenge in teaching today? I think uh, maybe it's my personal challenge in, uh, here in Russia, but I'm, I'm not sure that maybe it's uh, uh, different in other countries, but uh, sometimes when I 
talk with my colleagues uh, from abroad, they usually speak the same way that uh, I think the two biggest challenge is uh, the uh, the first challenge is uh, the motivation of the students. So they don't usually don't have motivation to work hard. They want easy fun. Uh, they want the fast result, and if they can't get that fast result, so they they decided to quit. Not to try to work more, but try to quit. And I think it's one of the problem because uh, you can't do anything with it. Yeah, so they stop uh, too early. They don't go deeper uh, and. I see that if they can, if they uh, have the potential, they can work more. But when you see it, you understand that, uh, unfortunately, they uh, are not the warriors. They're not the warriors. They want just to quit. It's it's the first thing. Uh, The second thing is that they don't have... uh, a lot of uh, wide uh, knowledge in different subjects. I always say about that you should be a T-shaped person, so you should uh, understand, as a designer, you should understand a lot of things. Many things you should understand, you should work with it, because uh, you can't say, I I should, uh, I am a drawer. I would be, uh, I would draw, and it's all my job. Manufacturing is not my job. Uh, working with clients is not my job. I will. I like to draw, and I would draw. Yeah, but uh, sometimes they they want to go with this, and you know sometimes it's always the problem that um, maybe it's because of the school, maybe it's because of the, the time when we see a lot of clips and YouTube and internet a lot that uh, they uh, understand that it's uh, everything is very close. So it's easier to you to not to read something or check something, yeah? So it's easy to you just to search, but they can't find this way. So they don't try to remember something. Uh, and uh, sometimes I see that it's a problem because uh, when you are talking uh, for them about, for example, about Alphonse Mucha uh, or some other persons they don't understand you when you show him the picture then they said oh yeah i i know this but they don't know that it's alphonse Mucha, for example sometimes and uh i see it when it's a first grade student so uh sometimes it goes the way when i say them okay guys if you hear some kind of a strange word or strange uh, Surname, family name from the person, just try to write down and after that Google it. Because uh, I can't speak with you in other way. You should know some of that uh, things because uh, it's, I think it's a uh, design is, is a language. And uh, when you think about it uh, as a language and visual language and visual metaphor, so you should give them, uh, uh, it's about uh, how rich is your language. If you don't know a lot of that things, your language is very poor. You have two, three, five words, and that's all. But if you have a lot, you can uh, make more interesting concepts, more interesting ideas, because people could understand that you can mix very different things in one. And uh, it's just about uh, your uh knowledge knowledge about everything just maybe in a small way but about everything so how can we as educators help them overcome these challenges like uh, focus and you know widen their knowledge what 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 can we do to make them more interested um well you know i think we can uh give them um that can be a strange idea, but uh, I think you should give them always a difficult task. Because uh, from my point of view, if they try to solve difficult tasks and they fail, it's a way to uh, uh, 
it's a way to explain them why they fail and maybe change their attitude to this. Yeah. So I have some kind of, uh, some of this experience. So, and also I think the high stakes here is a very good idea because I always use for my, for example, for my students, uh, um, when we are in uh, our class on, uh, uh, design or post design. Yeah. So uh, all the tasks is usually the task from different contests. And uh, sometimes it's not a student contest. So, uh, for example, for Golden Bee in Russia, for example, the biggest biennale of posters. Uh, and, uh, for them, it's a challenge. I, I don't usually use some uh, small, uh, contents like, for example, in uh, that we have in our region. Yeah. So you're in our town because I think that when you are trying to go in a, um, in a very difficult, very serious competitions, even you fail, uh, you can uh, have an experience and you have experience and you have a way to analyze and everybody goes this way. So when I created my first posters, uh, golden, we also don't take that. Yeah. So <laughs> it's okay. It's normal. For everybody, I think, uh, that, uh, after that, you should do more, more, more. And after you have a kind of experience, so it's, it's easier. But sometimes you all, and you know, the, uh, another thing is, uh, very good when, uh, some of them get their posters there, for example, for any kind of that competitions and they get to the, uh, finalists or in, in shortlist. Yeah. yeah. So they understand that, uh, it's not a kind of a, uh, you know, a very special people who could get there and they don't live here around us. So it's just your, uh, classmate <laughs> who get there. And so they understand yeah. that it's possible. It's, uh, sometimes I, I have some kind of that experience because, uh, I have, uh, two or three. Uh, examples, uh, two or three examples when, uh, it was a, uh, fourth or fifth poster of my students when they get, uh, to a very serious contest. And I think it's a kind of uh, example for them. And also you have to work hard, uh, as a designer, not only as a teacher, but also as a designer because they understand your expertise, your experience. So when they see, uh, I don't, you know, I, I usually don't like to speak more about of the list of the contents in which I take place, et cetera, et cetera. But when you show it that sometimes for students that it's, uh, uh, 48 countries where my poster works, uh, exposed, et cetera. So they, uh, it's impressed them. And I think it's also a way to motivate them. Yeah. So if they have, a, a such person, so why not to be as, as him, I, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I you have a wonderful that competition in Russia. It's, it's called him, typo. Not... You, you have a wonderful competition in Russia. It's called Typomania. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's very exciting. It's very, very yes, exciting. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, they stopped to do it. But yes, yes, it's, it's yes. great. Yes, it was. I mean, I mean, I remember. I remember it back from the 2017 and 2018. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, really yeah. exciting they stuff. Stop really exciting stuff. The pandemic stuff. starts, so. It's, but yes, type of manual. Are they going to? Do you think they're going to start again? Um, I'm not sure. Not sure that they restarted in this situation. Fantastic. So, how do you see uh, the area of employment for for graduates? Uh, how, how can we support them and what can students do to improve their chances of, of employment? Uh, well, I think that, uh, you know, in Russia, it's usually, uh, I see that now uh, the, we don't usually have a big design firm. We have several big design firm in Russia, but usually they always start like a freelancer or a person that work with uh, kind of different uh, small clients, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not easy to get to the big company or just on the start. And usually they don't go this way. And uh, of course, I think that 
uh, we can uh, help them to make it easier uh, in a serialized first, uh, try and educate them as a T-shaped person so they can change mm -hmm. from one way of design to another way, for example, if they understand about, for example, uh, uh, you can you know, learn graphic design, but I think you should also understand how to make websites or something like that from the technical point of view, so, because sometimes you can uh, provide more service to your clients in this way, yeah, so, so or, uh, you can explain to uh, your clients how mm, it should go uh, because uh, if you don't understand it, it's, uh, uh, your client uh, usually think that you are not a, uh, not an experienced person. Yeah. So uh, another way is try to explain how to work with clients, how to understand what your clients want, and how to. Uh, work with uh, with them because you know sometimes uh, I always see that the clients comes to design uh, like uh, to the doctor when they already read something in internet mm -hmm. and find the his disease yeah you know so I understand what yes. what my disease is what should I take yeah yes. so and yes. uh, usually for designer we see it's the same on. way when the person comes and he decided that I need, for example, some kind of website or some promo in the social yeah. networks or something like that, but it shouldn't work yeah. because you understand that the problem in another way. So, and, uh, you know, we have lots of uh, such clients here. So, and uh, uh, another way is explain to students what is the, um, what, uh, how you can uh, create your cost. Now, what is the price of your work? Because uh, in design, it's one of the very difficult way because uh, even for, especially for clients, it's very difficult to explain why your logo costs, for example, $1,000 and uh, uh, another person can provide it for $10. Why is it so different? For, for, and they always think, uh, for what reason I should pay more? Yeah, so it's, it's a typical way, I think, uh, everywhere. So, and, uh, sometimes students, especially when they start working there, uh, uh, they have a kind of a mistake when they, uh, decided, okay, I will work for 10 bucks. For ten bucks, and that's all. So you should explain them that it's it's not a typical way. So it's a problem for all the industry that will have such prices, Absolutely. because such prices mm. is uh, uh, is a problem also uh, for us as well. Because uh, when I have, I also compete with them. And it's not a good way for me. Uh, so, but if you understand uh, that you have knowledge, you have a lot of works, and just to draw is not enough. So you, if they don't pay for just for that file with the two circles and several letters. Yeah, you know, uh, it's uh, about the uh, very. Um, um, it's a more holistic approach and more difficult task to solve. So, and we mm -hmm. should explain them how to make the reasonable price, the how to explain their costs, uh, how to uh, make that cost, for example, bigger. Yeah. So uh, I usually uh, tell my students, if you work after two years, you can just uh, and you understand that you don't want to work for that small price. You should just uh, make a very simple thing. You could uh, write to all your clients' letter that you improve, uh, you increase your price for twenty five percent, and that's all. Yes, uh, you have some persons that don't want to work with you, but uh, you have less uh, clients for the same money. So, and in this way, uh, you have more time for yourself or for your family or for another clients who want you for that, uh, more price. So it's just kind of way of change. Yeah.
they should be ready for that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, if you had a magic wand, if there was a, if there was no limitations, yeah. what would you change in education? You know, I think the motivation of students. I'll change the motivation of students. Uh, because I think uh, everybody, you, me, and uh, all other teachers want to see your students highly motivated. If they ha- would be highly motivated, it's uh, solve all other things. We can teach them for everything. That's fantastic. But other things, other, is there anything we can do to make them, you know, like like changes that we can do in the structure in in the studio, in the teaching, we, we can, are there, do you think there are any change we can do to create that, to, 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 to reinforce motivation? Yeah. Um, no, it's a difficult question. It's a difficult uh, one. Yeah, yeah, it's a difficult question. Uh, but uh, because, you know, I always think that the motivation is something that inside the person. You know, I think the motivation mm-hmm. is uh, connected with curiosity. If you are curious enough, you have the motivation. And sometimes I see mm-hmm. students that uh, they are, or for example, they are on their first grade, but they are too tired of life. Yeah, you know, so and they're too tired. <laughs> and uh, uh, you think, why? If you are too tired, already too yeah. tired, what, what to do after that? Yeah, you know, so it, I think for designer, the curiosity is uh, uh, a very, very, uh, very important because you should, uh, mm-hmm. it, it, because it drives you, you are, uh, it should be interesting for you to make. But do you think that they enter school really easily because in my time it was really hard yeah. to enter so when you were in it's like oh my god i'm in charlie in the chocolate factory you got the golden ticket you yeah, know it yeah, was yeah, that yeah. difficult so yes. when you were in you were so motivated because you had you had such a hard time yes. getting there yes yes, yes. do you Absolutely. think that we give it to them too easily and then they don't know they don't know where they are so they don't Okay, I, I've got this, but they don't understand that this is something really precious. Yeah, you know, I th- uh, I fully agree with you. So yes, it's uh, too easy. It's the first thing, and the uh, other thing, uh, for example, in Russia, lots of uh, students goes to the university just uh, right after the school. So, and I right. think yeah. it's uh, not a good way. Sometimes I think that mm-hmm. they need to three years to try to walk somewhere, maybe to try to make yeah. a design, to walk in a kind of a small print house, yeah, some kind of a small uh, places when they work with the kind of some kind of the staff or making some uh, business, even business card or something like that, no matter what, uh, for printing, for cutting them, and so Because, you know, uh, if they understand that it's the way they want to go after, if they understand that it's yeah. the way they need, it would be easier for us because uh, uh, when you explain them, they understand for what reason they need. It. They have, they already have questions because you know sometimes now when yeah. we are teaching, we gave them answers for not, uh, but they don't have questions. You gave them the, a lot of answers, but they don't have that questions. And I think they need uh, that questions to understand, uh, to understand and to get them. Hard. And I saw also this in, on my students, because when I uh, have some task, when they should not only design, for example, the business card or some kind of a booklet or something like that, uh, or the computer in, in design or illustrator, they also should print it cut it, and uh, some of them uh, should uh, make it uh, twice or fi- even five times because they they make the uh, layout. But when they try to print, cut, and make it work, it's also a very difficult task sometimes for them because they don't understand the technology. When they print and understand that the uh, uh, the font size is too small or some 
yeah. uh, thin else, etc. So I think it's also the way of going that. Uh, I usually not, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I I try to explain students something like prepress or something like that, but uh, I think I usually uh, do it only after they, they try to do it uh, their own way. Because uh, before that, it looks like a, a strange checklist that I gave them and they don't understand for what reason. After that, they try and understand a lot of failures of them. So they understand that that checklist is the way you should go and they see why it's important. And Mm -hmm. I also Mm -hmm. think uh, one more thing that uh, I think uh, our students need, uh, it's a deeper knowledge of technologies. Today, I think it's usually a lack of uh, technology and materials. Not IT technology, even, even materials. So, uh, how to manufacture and something. Because for designer, it's, uh, extremely important. I always believe that when uh, design, it's not about the beautiful pictures, but about the making goods. And when you are making goods, making things, uh, you understand that you can draw a beautiful picture that doesn't work when you try to manufacture it. And design that is only mm-hmm. paper design, it's not a good way. And uh, sometimes they can uh, draw a great thing, but they don't understand technology and they don't understand that it's impossible to make. And uh, here we have you know, two options. We should create new technologies that can produce what they draw, or they can try to adapt that to or the current level of technology and uh this uh lack of techno- uh, knowledge of technologies and lack of knowledge of the materials of their uh, properties uh, and all that kind of things i think it's a uh, kind of a problem for the, uh, for example in russia in uh, design program because uh, usually they are uh, they don't have a lot of uh information about it especially if it's kind of a uh, fine arts academy when they have a design course they usually have okay uh the clay that's all yeah so they know how to draw but how to print or stuff like that is uh, not an easy way to understand how can our viewers and listeners find you uh well they can find me in uh, facebook Facebook, Pavel Pesklakov, uh, in Instagram also, uh, and also, uh, I think if you try to Google, I don't think that it's a lot of Pavel Pesklakov in Russia, especially with the designer sites like Academia, uh, like Academia Do, oh, or something like that. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. so it's yeah. t- typical ResearchGate.net, uh, ResearchGate.net. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, Excellent. What advice would you like to leave us with? Um, stay curious. Stay curious. Excellent. Thank well, you. thank you so much. It's been great to have you here. Uh, you keep in touch. Uh, looking forward to also to the Virtual Design Education Forum this, this year. And yeah, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Have a great, um, have a great day. Bye. Thank you.